Welcome to Moonbase 2. Hello everybody and welcome to the Moonbase 2 podcast. My name is Andy, Cup of Commander TFW, and we are joined this week by the battery man himself. It's Mikey G Wolfie 3. Hello, Mikey. I'm not really sure I'm in the mood for it this week. Battery man! Why aren't you in the mood for it this week, Mikey? We were hurt. Uh, words were said that hurt me uh, personally, and I'm just mm -hmm. a little, you know, a little, a, 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 just... I don't know if I'm I'm here for it this week, you know, after what what was said. Uh betrayed by friends. Betrayed well, by theoretic friends. friends. Supposed friends. Supposed um, friends. In in a live audience, I'm gonna, no less. <laughs> and uh yeah. And and what well, and then uh, like, you know, people come in, we've never met them, but I'm sure they're lovely people and they go like, Oh yeah, like the transmission with their structure and and, and, and TFW with their, you know, little bit of flexibility. And moon by two, what nonsense. Nonsense with, with their craziness. <laughs> <laughs> nonsense and crazy, and then, and then uh, something about us being a funnel, and it's just like yes, wow, a funnel hat, and and, and basically far fathering, fathering a new trend in Transformers podcasting that is continuing to this very day. Um, are you saying we are the fathers of uh, Transformers podcasts? I, uh, do you know what? Yes, uh, we are. <laughs> we are the Ben Siscos. Yeah, we oh, don't. Man. We don't want this role, but we will accept it. There we go. I like that for the. For the good of others. <laughs> um, we are David Avery. You're David. I'm Avery. Yeah, okay. I can yeah, do that. Avery Brooks, not David Avery. Oh, <laughs> that okay. fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I combined Keith David and Avery Brooks. Uh, it's, uh, that's too much sex right there. It's too yeah, sexual. It like your groin literally explodes <sighs> off the middle half of your body and shoots <sighs> into a wall as embedded in there. It's so erect. It's too good. Yeah. Um, too pure yeah, for so us. <laughs> I'm a little hurt. I'm a little hurt. Canada seems like a terrible place to go. That's and right. And bake. That's right. Uh, but we're not here to talk about the failings, the, the insults thrown by uh, our international friends. We are here to talk about Transformers. And there's not much this week. It's it's real light. Yep. Uh, there are a few stories that maybe we could have covered, but me and Mikey kind of talked about it before we started recording, and they just seem kind of eh. So we, we are left with the best of the best. Really? And the best of the <laughs> Well, you know. The best of the this week's best, potentially. Uh, we may as well kick off, Mr. Mikey, with some crappy woo-woo this week, as we have a Bumblebee movie infant bee costume. That's a that's a infant. I I actually at Isn't first that called I, the larva. When it, when I originally saw this, I thought it said infantry bumblebee. <laughs> so you could have like an army of children, but what? I don't think that it's it's on second reading that wasn't what it said. World uh, War Two bumblebee. <laughs> so what this is is obviously winter's drawing close, and you know Hasbro wants to cash in on that sweet sweet bumblebee merch money. Uh, so they're doing the infant muscle suit, as we've seen a few times before in previous years. Uh, that's came out around the same time as movies, and you know Bumblebee is popular uh, with the Kitty Winkles. So once again, a muscle suit has been developed for the kids to help them dress up like Bumblebee or as Bumblebee, I suppose, depending on how you like to phrase it. Uh, so it's listed on Walmart.com, uh, that lovely website. It's now in stock. Apparently, so if you're Jones in for it, you can get it now. Uh, the costume includes a muscle jumpsuit with 3D <gasps> pieces attached to the back and soft headpiece uh, so it's the really shitty like robin yeah. mask shall yeah, we say not like if though it's more like the mo the tv flash mask where everyone knows it's barry oh yeah yeah unless he's doing that. the vibrate thing which he stopped doing <laughs> it just doesn't have the chin part yeah uh, and we're just like this is really in fact that if anything that highlights the fact you have a really sharp chin here's the strange thing though mikey because mm -hmm. it's made for children 12 to 18 months. Yes, I was about to ask you something about that. Yeah, like, we we have a picture, uh, but it's not of, of uh, at least in this story, it's not of uh, the 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 it's child. The time four, it's... maybe five years old minimum. Yeah, yeah, f four to six year old, maybe, something like that. So, so we don't I... know what it looks like on a, on a baby. Shameful is what it will look. But do you, as I was looking at this, I was just like, I wanted to ring up Hasbro and go, have you seen... A 12 to 18 month old baby. <laughs> I mean, are there any parents working in your marketing or size departments? Mm -hmm. 
And if so, have have they sat you down for a chat? Because I feel they need to. Why? Why is that, Mikey? Why do you feel that that needs to be a thing? Because how do I put this? Your twelve to eighteen month old will not look like this. <laughs> So imagine this... it did. Imagine you put on this bumblebee suit and it's so good. It makes them look like they're four to six years old. Yeah. But it's, I'm just looking. It's like, okay, he's sat in their legs akimbo and everything else, blah, blah. That's it. You know, he, he, his legs are proportionate to his body size. His arms are proportionate. Babies, 12, even, even ones that are started walking, their legs are a different size to their body. Mm. So your child will look less like I'm wearing a crappy spandex suit and more like I've put a child in an in sort of a, a minion costume with accurate sized oh. legs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that, that's actually your, a fair point. <laughs> your child will be a yellow pill. I, I also hear that uh, it, was, it was from a comedy show, but I can't remember what it was, what uh, thing it was. And it's just like the guy had had a baby and he was like, babies just want to die. Everything they do wants <laughs> to make them die. <laughs> they eat, they want to choke on their food and die. They roll over in bed at night, they want to die. You have to burp them to make sure that they don't die. It's a constant fight of you keeping them alive. <laughs> now, you, you, you've you been around a child for a few months now. How accurate is that description? Um, You do have to burp her or else do you suddenly get this like... <laughs> sound building up. <laughs> so... As Satan summoned through the child. <laughs> Burp the baby or Satan will come. Come on. (laughs) Every time you burp, a little brimstone comes out. (laughs) Oh, man. It might be like uh, Drag Me to Hell, where where uh, just a hand comes out of the baby's mouth. (laughs) Back in there, demon. (laughs) Well, there you go. So, so yeah, there there is that. And I could see your child, your small child, who's not that. Uh, going like, I want to eat this part. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's rubber and it's probably big, but I, I, I don't know. I, I don't see there's any need to dress up a, a twelve to eighteen month old thing. They don't care who Bumblebee is. No, that, that's for you, and I don't think you. That, I, I mean, you like can, you dressing up your dog. Pa- parent how they, you like. It's your baby, they, but I, I would, I would be like. Well, I don't think you should do that, if, personally. If I go outside and see a chihuahua wearing a little pink ribbon and a pink dress, because I have seen that. Oh, no. And then someone tells me, oh, my dog loves dressing up. No, it doesn't. That's about you. Yeah, <laughs> that's all on you. You need to... It's just... That's all about you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm just... And th- 30, 33 34 dollars for a, a, a ch- uh, like an infant's outfit. I don't you know. a child with it. Yeah, like, I would have thought $33 would be enough for the 46-year-old, which would arguably be more material. I, I yeah. don't know. It's uh... Free child hmm. with every purchase. What if you could... Maybe it would be better if you could get a Megatron one. <laughs> Little infant <Maybe>. movie <laughs> Megatron. Or only Prime. if it got... Oh, only. no. No, a Optimus hmm? Prime one, and it has a electric voice box, so when you poke the baby's tummy, it goes, Vivian! <laughs> Vivian. <laughs> Maybe oh, it's not even believe. a button; it's the motion detected one. So I it just detects never... when a parent comes into the room. Vivian. No, no, it's when the baby moves, <laughs> and you need to put it on a really wriggly baby. Like you're sitting there, like having a chat with your friends, and it's like, yeah, yeah, it's been a great day. Vivian. What? What? No, it's fine. It's my baby's outfit. Oh, Vivian. <laughs> I am Optimus Prime. <laughs> I am Optimus Prime. Give me your face. Give me your face. <laughs> I'd still frown upon it, but at least it would be uh, stupid. That's a, that's as best as I think we can go with this. <laughs> I would want to. I, at least it could be used for evil. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there'd be yeah, there'd be more to it than just this. I don't know, Mikey. This is dumb, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit dumb. Uh, then, do you want to take us over to some Mr. News from Mr. Dr. Woo Woo? Yeah, it's been sentencing. a while since the, the fiendish Dr. Woo came back, but they're here. I keep thinking they're dead. They get disappeared for yeah, six yes. or eight months, and then suddenly, like, oh, the ghost of Dr. Woo. Um, but they've announced on their Weibo account a series of new accessories for Power of the Prime, Minibots, Titans, uh, Minibots and Titans Return clones. 
Hmm. So these are basically weapon sets to go with each character. There's W uh, DWP forty. Isn't that an oil? DWP forty probably sounds like hmm. it. Hmm. Uh, clone Trooper, two different pairs of guns for the Titans Return Autobot clones. DWP forty one clone troopers, uh, clone warriors. My God, um, two different pairs of guns and extra pieces to hold them in beast mode. Uh, DWP forty two Comer. Uh, gun for power of the prime beachcomber. Uh, DWP forty three fishing gun, harpoon for Titans Return Sea Spray, so he can deliver his pizzas. Fishing gun. Yeah, that's so he can deliver pizzas long distance. I kind of wish instead he came with like a fishing rod. I wish he came with a box of shame. <laughs> he does. You just you just sit him in, but you can actually pull it up like he's holding his knees up to his chin. He, oh, he I just see sits what you're there. saying. He just mm. sits there. He doesn't transform, he just sits there. And then you hug Cosmos, because Cosmos matters more. Um, DWP44 Charger. Two guns, one white, one black, for Wind Charger and Tailgate. Uh, these appear to have little clip-on parts as well. I'm not sure what they're for. Are those the Titan guns? Those might be the Titan Return guns. But yeah, I mean, if you're into these teeny tiny bots, um, you know, you want to give them some better weapons, especially, again, Sea Spray with his pizza box. Mm. Uh it's a pizza box. Um, yeah, it gives you some extra options. I think they look fairly decent with the robots. A little on the skinny side for my tastes. Which one, um, sorry? The gun, just the guns in general. There's a gen- like maybe not the Decepticon weapons so much, but certainly the ones that go with the mini bots. Hmm. Okay. Um, especially wind chargers. I uh, think it's because wind chargers are so small. Like, he's just, yeah. like, if you think about how big a Legends is, that is a tiny gun. Teeny tiny gun. Um, but Andy, what's your opinion of these teeny tiny guns? Um, they're fine. I think the, the biggest thing, of course, is going to be, as usual, how much are they? Mm. Uh, but I do think these are things that... It's a shame that Legends don't have little weapons, since they are made to hold them. Uh, but it, it's not. it's never been a massive complaint that Legends figures don't have weapons. Um, it's just like the obvious thing for a company to do if they want to go, okay, well, how about we make some guns for them? Uh, mm. I do like the fact that uh, Beachcomber has a clip to clip onto his little hood for the attachment point. That's kind of nice. Uh, mm. It does make a very sticky up out of nowhere kind of deal. But uh, yeah, th- these are fine. If they're too much, though, it's it would be a big frowny face from me going, um, otherwise it's like, a, okay, yeah, cool. I know Mr. Tricky's 3D printing his or has 3D printed his. Uh, so it's not going to be as lucrative for those of you who have 3D printing tech, but for those so who don't that, and need them, you know, here you go. Does that mean the CAD model, the CAD models are out there for this? I guess so. I, I mean, I someone mm-hmm. probably just uh, made a 3D, um, uh, a 3D model of it, and then oh, you just true, use true, that true. 3D model, and then you print it through. So once you know the, once you know how to use CAD, it's you know scanning and all that jazz. Yeah, or just use the 3D modeling software. I mm. imagine you can do that as well. So, yeah, cool. Uh, hopefully they're not too much. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah. Uh, in that case, Andy, take us on. Mikey, let me tell you about some <laughs> hot pre-orders. <laughs> hot, hot, hot. <laughs> hot pre-orders <laughs> from Takara Tomy as you know, apparently Unite Warriors, Devastator, and Superion are getting reissues Ooh. for some reason. I don't really know why. Especially Superion. Especially Superion. Because I'm pretty sure Superion hung around for a while. Because no one really cares about the uh, the aerial bots. For the most part. Uh, maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Uh, Devastator makes a bit more sense. Because he was a very, very big boy. So, uh, we've got prices for them as well. Pre-orders are going up for them for on, you know, your local sponsored sites. For about $135 for Superion, which I think was about his original release price, right? Mm. Give or take. Uh, and Devastator is $224. They'll, they're both expected to be on uh, January 2019, so there's still time to save up your money, if you money. like. Money. It's buried uh, under forms at the moment. I can't grab it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, it doesn't say there's any real differences. Uh, it'll probably just be another base reissue of the figures and just be like, mm. hey, here they are again, if you like. Um, odd. Bit strange. Uh, I, I bit said strange. On, I said on yeah. Twitter, like if they'd said Megatronia with Sakamoto heads, oh I would have been yeah. well more into that. Uh, to be fair, I'd be just like Megatronia version two, yeah, or just like say, exact same figure, just reissue. Cha cha. 
Cha. Yeah. You can, yeah. I mean, you can still get Mega. I don't think Megatronia is still too hard to acquire if she you go to. Um... Goes on sale sometimes, but not often. I mean, if you head over to Mandaraki, you could probably get a decentish uh, deal on her. I would have thought. Mm. It's then been a while them, since I checked. Them foreign ship. That's true. You do have the the shipping to to worry about, but uh, yeah. Uh, hey, Mikey, what do you think of this? Um, cool. I you know more Unite Warriors better as long as it comes with all the wonderful things that makes. Unite Warriors, great. Oh yes, the comics. Um, I imagine again. I imagine they would. I can't imagine they'd change the boxes. That seems like more expense than anything if they did. Oh man, it'll just turn out to be it's actually just like Hasbro toys just being released over there because that what they've done with Power of the Primes. It's oh, just like that would mean that they'd get the the worst Devastator then, arguably, because yep. uh, the the Japanese one had like yep. uh, art- articulation. <laughs> <laughs> you you'd get original Scrapper. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, I remember people saying like, if you just care about Devastator, get the American release. If you want the individual robots to be good as well, get the Japanese release. And I was like, why is that an option? Why can't the American release have the decent single Constructicons as well? Why can't that be a thing? <laughs> because it was annoying. I thought it was. I, I always thought it was stupid because I wanted mm. the one that had the the limbs, like the the Constructicons, as decent toys as well. It, seem, mm, it mm. seems such a shame to buy an expensive set and be like, well, we know you're only going to keep it in Devastator mode, but we're going to make sure... Well, not not they're going to make sure. That makes it sound uh, a little bit aggressive. No. Uh, but we're going to cut money uh, to make it a little bit cheaper. And since we know you're just going to have it in Devastator mode anyway. And I mean, I, I get that some people probably would be okay with that, but me, I, I'm... I, yeah, I'm, if I want I that, really I'll... Listen. I'll buy a Flames toy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. And I'll get something better for the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. I, I saw reviews of Drift. Holy hell. <laughs> Holy fucking hell. Holy hell. Like, they, they just basically went, Hey, 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 what? Need you in the balls. Dropped something amazing on you. Need you in the balls again. Took your money and said, You're welcome! Oh, I thought you were going to just say, Need you in the balls. Axe to the side of the face. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean the yeah. the rapid kicks to the nads and the taking of the money. I mean that works too. That is yeah, but it's like the, well, basically they are doing a sale, but they said like no, no, we're doing this our way, which is what <laughs> we hurt you and give you something you want. <laughs> but it's but so like, nice, but you must suffer for it. Yeah, you must earn him. Like <laughs> Tarn, they'll just literally just start torturing you until you say I'll give you the money. Oh, we knew, we knew you'd give us the money. Why? Because you already pre-ordered. Yep. Now we're just <laughs> gonna continue from where we left off. <laughs> But yeah, uh, those are things coming. I don't. I wouldn't expect more reissues for Unite Warriors, uh, as as I mentioned just now. I don't mm. understand why these are even a thing, but I'm not against them. It's just very like, is there a special thing to justify, or is it? Or do you think it's just like a ah, we've got extra stock. Let's let's ship it out kind of deal. Mm. What do you think, Mikey? I don't know. I don't know. Like they said, uh, Unite Warriors and Legends would live on in some way. <laughs> <laughs> and by that so, we mean reissuing them. Yeah, I'm wondering if that is. But like, with reissues with a new comic, I'd laugh my ass off. Um, so I'm I'm curious to see where this goes. Um, you know, I will we just see reissues of Combiner War stuff? Will we see some of the Titans Return stuff? Maybe mm. new car. Like, I'm hoping for new characters. Um, Hydron Buster, easy one they should do. Yes, yeah. Um, but yeah, so wait and see. Oh, um, maybe do a couple of extra. Excuse me, extra female, so we can have a full female combiner. Yeah, yeah. Since um, Chromie ain't gonna have shit. <laughs> yeah, and even then, we'd still be missing one. That's true. Uh, I did hear a fun little thing, which would be neat as well, if they did Devastator into G two colors or into his original Diet Clone colors. How have neither of those things been tempted yet? Pff, I, who knows? I have been asking myself that since that figure got announced. Especially for the SDCC one. Do you remember when they did that and it was just chrome oh. parts? Yeah, not even like good chrome. No, the bad chrome. Yeah, the jet fire chrome. Yeah, and you're just like, oh, we did that. Well, we couldn't think of another idea. There's green devastator. There's yellow devastator. There's blue, red, green, uh, orange, um, orange devastator. devastator. Yeah, and so many devastators. You could have even you could, or if you wanted to go fucking crazy and be fucking psychopathic, you could have given him weird armor. Golden armor and a big old cape and a drill hand. <laughs> and you can sell him as fucking Zone Devastator. Andy, I'd have taken fucking Shattered Glass Devastator over what they did. Oh, mm, again, I, qualifier, I, I, qualifier, I, I, qualifier there. 
over what they did. Man, I, I wish we could open a rift to another world where that happened and and y- we got the two Mikeys to discuss things and just see how it would play out. <laughs> We're like, can the you believe one... this shit? They gave us shattered glass and it's like, in my universe, they just chromed it and it's like, is that better? What? We don't know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, a red and white go. devastator. It could be a thing. It could be. Yeah, it could be. It's not a thing I'd want. but I think yeah. there's a third party one. Uh, I think yes, there right. is. T- it was the TFC? Hercules, uh, Hercules, Hercules yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was real in Shattered Glass Coast. I remember I was bitching him. Well, complaining about that, saying that was that stupid. It wouldn't go the fuck away! <laughs> no, it wouldn't. <laughs> uh, Mikey, you may as well take us on to the last two stories, because believe it or not, we're basically at the end of the news. <laughs> yeah, nothing happened! No. Um, yeah, we have TFCon Chicago 2018 guest reports uh so for those who don't know it's happening in chicago illinois chicago illinois on october 26 to 28 this year at the crown plaza chicago o'hare hotel and conference center in rosemount illinois with uh other guests announced already are bud davis ian james corlett stephen cleaner uh his name is stephen cleaner or keener sorry sorry i'm <laughs> tired it's been a long day um but yeah but they have announced Two more guests. First off, we have James Roberts, writer of Mord Meets Die and Lost Light. Uh, he'll be taking part of QA panels, autograph sessions, the usual works. He will have scripts for sale. Make sure to tell him what kind of ones you think would be most awesome to see. These will be annotated scripts, uh, which will give you a few of his thoughts and or feelings, if as a human being, James Roberts has any. Going by his <laughs> writing, he just wants you to suffer. Yeah, James is lovely. It's fine. Um, <laughs> he thinks I'm funny. He doesn't. He doesn't listen to the show. Um, but that's cool. Uh, also, um, TFCon will be welcoming Keizama at her first ever TFCon. Uh, she is, of course, the artist for Optimus Prime. She does some covers. She does a lot of other stuff. She does 2000 AD, which I'm fairly certain she occasionally wakes up and starts giggling to herself about. Um, <laughs> she's going to be at the for the whole weekend offering prints, commissions, everything else. She is an awesome lady. Uh, make her do the rock horns, and by which I mean walk by her with a camera, and she will dive at you, grab the camera, rock horns, and dive out of the scene. Um, but yeah, Kay is really cool. Kay is a really, really cool person. She's been at a few TFNs. Um, was she at an auto assembly? Uh, no. 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 She predates. But yeah, so the last couple of years, she's been a really good attendee, and I hope, you know, hopefully she'll keep coming over. And like, she, she goes to a lot of effort to come to these things. Yeah, she's coming from Japan. That ain't a, yeah. a short trip. Yeah, and I believe when she first arrived, she could barely speak English. Yes. Uh, her English has improved significantly since then, but it was kind of like, hey, and she'd wave, and you're just like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> you're lovely. And nowadays, it's like, she what was it? She had Rob a couple of years ago and just sat him down, and they were talking about baby metal for like a half an hour. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is, again, the Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel and Conference Center, Rosemont, Illinois, October 26 to 28. Get your bookings in. The hotel block is still available. Uh, you can book on the TFCon Chicago website, tfcon.com forward slash hotel. And advance tickets for attendees are also now online. That's tfcon.com forward slash tickets. Don't put in CA. That's CA. That's Canada. Nothing good comes from Canada. Lies come from Kanasha. Yeah, lies and polar bears. Mm. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. What they have polar? They have polar bears in Canada. I'll, I'll believe you. I've got no. It's quite well. No, to... it's it's not a secret. Mm. It's not like people are going like, "What's that over there? Is that a snowdrift?" And like rangers are running in front, waving. I'm going, "Yes, it's snow. It's nothing but snow." Yeah, but this is where like the you you see a polar bear, you turn around and the bear just kind of brushes itself off, and it's just a normal black bear, and then it walks away. <laughs> but you didn't see it; you just assumed it was white. <laughs> bear's just like, yeah, we, we'll let the humans think that polar bears are still a thing. We killed them off years ago. Oh man, yes, yes. I mean, fault my logic. I dare I can't. you. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> well, that's it for our news, Mikey. It's yeah. uh, it's it's late, but uh, late. I, you know, technically, we had to put the from the files of Teletran two up uh, for this week, uh, this month. So there'll be another files this month as well at some mm. point. So you know, it's one of Enjoy those what things. You got. Hey, we nearly killed ourselves for that show. Yay! And you didn't. And some of you haven't even heard a Patreon one. Where we killed ourselves more. No, that's true. That's true. Um, a lot. We had one good comment today on the on the tweeters, which was like make, enjoying the, the what is it? Hang on, I'll bring up my phone so I can look look at things with some sort of sense of modernity. 
I have grabbed my phone. Grabbing the phone. That's a euphemism. Oh no, lewd. Uh, da -da 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 -da. uh this is from Marion Hilditch, M M Mort A H on Twitter. Goodness, at the Moonbase Two, reviewing eight issues of th uh, in Thursday's episode. A treat so far. <laughs> oh, it's nice that they lie. And then Stuart Webb, the Inflatable Dalek, uh, podcast Ma Maximus, I believe. Yes. Uh, makes our next one having four look simple. It does. It does make it look simple. Damn Don't I get me fucking started on the transmission, guys. Ooh, we're doing one issue. Enjoy finishing <laughs> reviews in December. <laughs> yeah, they don't they pretty much do like um, one issue as soon as it comes out? Because we don't do that. We we do the, the only they thing do... that we can handle and pump them all out in one go. Yeah, So, but that means they also only do one a week. Oof. That means we need to do two shows, two, two shows a week. Two shows two. a week. We need right. to be doing the two shows a week. Like, I don't think you have the time for that. I don't think I have the life for that. No. Like life force. No. <laughs> And I don't have the time to edit and upload that many videos. <laughs> Sitting there, just, please, please. Oh my god, I, it'd be nuts. I cannot edit anymore. Uh, we we also need to decide what we're doing for this month. So are you going to record uh, from the files while I'm at TF Nation? Um, no, because you won't be here. I mean, I, that won't stop you from recording it. It just means that as soon as it's done, you can send it to me and I can upload it. Record from the files on my own about comics. Yeah, well, I mean, it didn't have to be just you. I'm sure there are other people in the world who like reading couldn't, Transformer couldn't, comics. Considering that, what, we've got three out this Wednesday, which means we still have another three to go this month. We oh might just be able to God, record... Oh my God, no, you're lying, Mikey. That means yeah. we'll have six to do this month. Yeah, so we might oh just, you know... <laughs> Record after TFN. Oh, you like, do, you... like sane people. See, I see, I see what you want to do. You just want to get me in to make me suffer too. I see what you want to do. You want out. <laughs> You're trying to find an exit strategy. <laughs> there is no exit strategy. I'm, I'm, not, I'm trying to limit my work or lessen my workload. Yes. If I go down, you're fucking coming <laughs> with me. Oh man. Well, Mr. Mikey, what have you been up to this week apart from plotting my downfall? <laughs> uh, not a lot working and um, sciencing some stuff, so that was fun. Ooh. But in terms of stuff relevant to the podcast, haven't really bought anything this week and actually haven't watched much. Um, like It's been a bit of a busy week, so I, I haven't got much on the old watch list, so I'll just go over a few things. Um, Common Rider Build 46 mm -hmm. uh, aired last week. How many I episodes saw... until the end now? Two, three? Three, I think. Oh, man. Um, I saw last week. It, it aired last week, but I only saw a quick preview of it. Mm. So I watched it in full this time. Um, Honestly, pretty, pretty good episode. Pretty, pretty, pretty good episode. It had the, oh, God, we're all going to die barbecue. Yay! Uh, which is always fun because it's just like, oh, no. Was Vin Diesel uh, there? Did, it, or did he start talking about family? <laughs> there was quite a bit of family talk. <laughs> there, there was a nice bit where Rogue tries to have a speech and everyone just literally ignores him and he just sort of goes into the corner eating his... Uh, Man, it, so it sounds like he's turned into to go, um, uh, Necrom. Like, everybody's yeah. just shitting on him now. What a, what a bummer. He got neck Um what They have said he's getting a form in a hyper battle, battle video, but it looks like it's just a repaint of the movie for them. Oh, no. Yeah. Um... But yeah, and most of the episode was about Greece. It was a Greece focused episode. And it's also reminding me this show has a remarkably high body count. <laughs> like, that's a lot of people to die in one second. Oh, uh, yeah. Good. Um, like, the only shows that definitely have a higher body count than this are Gaim and Blade. Hmm, okay. Which, where, you know, the body count was a large proportion of the, you know, humans. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, no. a lot of us died in both those shows <laughs> a lot of us died <laughs> like America's gone remember remember that remember oh, how yeah. they bombed America yeah <laughs> because they were trying to bomb a city and then uh, what was it Rosho decided like I'm just gonna spread these across the states shit happens <laughs> I guarantee you he like targeted every major city as well oh probably because he was a dick um and, like, Blade had the rad roaches or, or whatever they were. Um, that ate people everywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's right. In in their billions. Um, they deserved it. So yeah, but, like, it was a... <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was a Grease-focused episode. A bit of... Bit of uh, sort of a slight return of his sidekick characters. Okay. Just a small one. Uh, but, yeah, like, I like Grease. Uh, I think they've done some good character work with him. He's, he's definitely stronger than Sento for character at this point. Um, right. Which... 
isn't said. I think Sento started quite strong for character, but I think you know if he became common rider the plot. Mm. Uh, and uh, whereas Cross and Greece and Rogue up until recently had their, they had a fair bit of character work going on. Sento was very reactionary. Okay. Um, but Greece, yeah, a very very strong uh, bit of work for him. Very good ending. Very very good ending. Uh, introduces his final form. Uh, have you seen pictures of his final form yet? Uh, I don't think so. I haven't. Common, I've, I've common probably have Greece... the Soto figures. Oh uh, yeah, the, yeah, the blue yeah. one with the metal claw. Common Rider Grease Blizzard. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Uh, they've repainted the helmet, so I don't think it has the sort of translucence anymore. No. Uh, and they've given him the arm from Build Robot. Yeah. From Phoenix Robo. That's right. And everything else is a straight repaint. Um, but no, it looks pretty good in person. The light work on it was excellent. Got to say. Um, really hope it's got cool powers and like the fight, it was actually the the fight beforehand was pretty good, mm. but like he transformed just at the end of the show, uh, because there there there's a thing about using this form which I won't go into, but uh, so I I really want it to be cool, uh, because Grease is cool, he's a cool guy, and I definitely think we're going through the show in an anime, we're going to be leaving our friends behind as we climb towards a major villain. Yeah, especially since you're climbing a literal tower. Sure. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, so I think Rogue will probably go next, and then Cross will go last. And then, yeah, it'll be like, build the bosses. Oh, oh, the the solution to the, the, the bad guy plan, like the hero's giant plan for saving the world? Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> How? What? <laughs> huh, that, yeah, they're, they, they take an interesting direction. A bit out there, I'm guessing. Okay. Not a little further than opening a zip in the sky and sucking a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of monsters onto another planet. A little bit more out there than that. So you can you can watch, and I I I think it might. I don't know. I don't I don't know. If you've seen Ryuki, you might be able to get some of it. That's all okay. I'll say. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, um, I watched the Girls und Panza movie. Okay. Do you remember Girls und Panzer, Andy? Is, is that where the girls are piloting tanks? Is that the ones where the girls are giant boats? Uh, where they're pa- piloting tanks. It's okay. the one where... So it's the one where they're in a school and there's a sport called Sen Shadow across the country, which is tanks. Where, where, where they just drive around shooting each other in tanks and, you know, they get sports flags. Um, <laughs> sports? Yep. Uh, but yeah, so this picks up right after the series. In fact, it's tied directly in and is completely unforgiving to someone who hasn't seen the show. Oh, good. That sounds welcoming. Yeah. Um, basically divided into a 20-minute opening fight. Uh, about uh, 50 minutes, half an hour, 50 minutes uh, sort of plot-based character stuff. Mm. And then like another 20 to half an hour fight. Yeah. Um, I find Girls and Pans are the series very engaging. Um, I think they do some very clever stuff by, I, you know, you identify characters more by their vehicle than themselves. Right. Which I think works when you have... A, it has a huge cast. And this movie has a bigger cast because all the bad... All the... Well, bad guys. The antagonist characters from the last series are now all helping out the main characters. I like, you know, one is the English Tea Party team. One is the Russian team led by a very tiny Japanese lady. One is the... What is strategy? We just need to attack, attack, attack more Daka team. <laughs> who are okay. who are amazing. They have a whole thing about like become like worshippers of one team that's called Duck. Cuz the the different main teams are named after animals. Right. So one team is Duck and they're 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 an interesting team to say the least. And these guys just are like I love you. L- teach us your ways. There's the history buff team, there's the nerd team, there's the sporter, sporty girl team. Like the only team where everyone's divided up into personalities is the student council and the main characters. And yeah, so it's fun. It's a fun movie, completely unforgiving, but really fun. Also, the things these girls survive with, without even a scratch is hilarious. Because <laughs> the, the tank battles are really quick paced, like really quick paced and kind of nuts. Like there's some really weird, brilliant moments with it. Um, and again, the, t- the tanks are given are the kind of the personality to the whole thing. So they just zoom around. It's great. Um, and the other thing, uh, the only other thing, is something relevant to the podcast, which I've been meaning to talk about, which Ooh. is Power of the Primes finished the show, and I finished watching it. I had been tweeting pictures from it on the tweeters, and then I stopped because I couldn't take it anymore. You, see, you seem that. to be enjoying yourself while watching it. 
No, no, I was not. <laughs> this was that was how I made it through the first four episodes. Yay! Um, some podcasts uh, uh have kind of and some reviewers and stuff have said like, oh, it's 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 better. It's better, and it's probably the best one. And I will admit, it's probably the best of the three. That's not a high bar, Andy. That's not even a bar. No, it's shit. It is really bad. It's just not as bad as the last two. Oh, progress. Yeah, mild, so mild progress. <laughs> basic plot is Megatronus is going to wipe out all Transformers. Megatron is leading a team made up of Windblade, Victorion, and Perceptor for some reason. Um, and they are going to find a Requiem Blaster and stop Megatronus from getting it and stop him getting involved. But then there's also Overlord, who's being teamed up with Rodimus, who is working for Megatronus but has something to do with Unicron, and then Primal's involved. And uh, The scripting is, for the most part, pretty horrible. Mm. Um, Megatron still comes out by far the best, but they actually give him relatively less to do here than they did in the other two. Okay. And he didn't do much in Titan's Return. Like, he just showed up and said snarky things. Um, and, that's, and that's despite the fact that here he's the main character. Yay! <laughs> uh, Primal has no personality. Oh, good. At good. all. I mean, like, at all at all. Mm -hmm. uh, Megatronus, Mark Hamill is doing his best with terrible direction. Is he very much Mark Hamill in a terrible production? Because he, he, he's been that gentleman before. If you recall a, a movie he called has. Giver. Yeah, or like, he's using his Phoenix King voice. I don't remember. Phoenix King from what? Uh, Avatar. Oh, God. Bleh. Yeah, okay. Fire, Fire Lord. The Fire Lord voice. And, Derp. but it's like, imagine that without the direction that sh that role got. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, because Good. like, what? Fantastic. Yeah. Because voice direction, not voice acting, voice direction is one of the key problems the series has. Um, <laughs> the animation. No, no, what Mikey said there. One. Yeah, the animation is still pretty <laughs> bad. There is a hilarious scene of Predaking and Volcanicus chasing them. Mm -hmm. uh, because for some reason, they're not fighting. Why would they? Um, and, and they're literally running with their arms out in hug me poses. Mm -hmm. And the arms aren't moving as the bodies are moving. And there's also a thing where someone will be in one scene. The, pa the camera will pan around and they're in a completely different position. Hmm. And no one knows why. Or like Megatron gets knocked and he's like, oh my god, he's going for miles. Cut to, he fell four feet away. Um, Victorion gets a lot of shit kicked out of her, which I found hilarious because the character is painful in Titan's Return. Um, let's see. Overlord, big anticlimax. Uh, U Rodimus Unicronus. Uh, Judd Nelson needs to not voice act. Oh, no. Because he, he is the legitimate case of someone who is just bad at the role. Do you think he was... He didn't seem too bad, you know, back in the day. Do you think no, something no, happened to him? I think he kind of didn't care. Mm, that, I mean, like, yeah. That's, he that's... Didn't, he, I don't feel like he was invested in the role or that he gave a particular shit. Because I, I definitely know, feel he didn't feel that way. Like, he definitely came across that way in Titan's Return. Yeah. Like, um, here, he's doing evil evil Rodimus for most of it. Oh like, god, yes, I forgot he's he's uh, a, an evil boy uh, now, isn't he? Uh, and you do get uh, Beard Rodimus Unicronus, that is in there. Mm. Like, uh, as is Optimal Optimus. It's true evolution. Um, yeah, but the animation's pretty poor. Uh, the animation style is still something I like, overall. I just would like to see it with frame rates. The oh. only thing that beats it for frame rates is fucking Dragon Prince. I told you it was bad, was... didn't I? That's a shocking. You didn't. I, I, I don't think you believed uh, me I didn't. when I said how bad it was. I didn't. And then, like, people tell me, oh, well, they're trying to imitate 2D animation. Have you fucking watched 2D animation? What? What Were you watching it like doing what I used to do when I was trying to find scenes where you put, hit, the, hit the frame by frame button on the remote? <laughs> it was terrible. Like, that's worse than Ruby's initial season in terms of animation, oh, yes. like, frame rates. Oh, and, yeah. you know. Like, that's worse than, like, Combiner Wars for frame rates. And that was bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and also, two things, like, Solus Prime arc made no sense. Um, there was one episode at the end, the second to last episode, where something, everything was split screen. <laughs> like, out of fucking nowhere. It'd just be like, the music uh, was there-ish, but it, you need, like, the music is clearly playing on Stranger Things, did it? Sure. Which the which Titans Return was also doing, um, and the last episode has 
about six different bullshit moments. What do you not, mean? Not bad. Bullshit. Can you can um, you say what they are without spoilers or or not? No, but you, all right. Like for next minute and a half, I am spoiling things. I am spoiling things for this terrible show. You should not support and watch. Okay, but you might want to. So literally skip ahead a minute and a half. I'm going to be watching my clock so I don't go any higher than that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Optimus Prime gets revived literally out of nowhere. Just pulled out of literally the asshole of the world. Uh, Megatron dies for no good reason except they wanted to say, ooh, he used to be Galvatron. What? That came out of nowhere. Megatronus' defeat was he was wiped out by Solus Prime, despite the fact that she had been sitting there for three episodes staring at was it what was happening and could have solved this in four fucking seconds. Nice. Uh, the handling of the Dinobots was terrible. The way everyone was revived at the end was terrible. The ending where democracy literally dies on Cybertron. After the council, it's like, oh, we've got a council representing everyone else. No, nope, Primal's going to be your new leader. What? Why? What? Why? And we're back. That was, that was, your, that was your spoiler section. Insert Vangelis going, now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a pretty shit show, and I find it depressing that if uh, War for Cybertron has an accompanying uh, series, it's probably going to be done by Machinima. Um, but it won't be on Go90, because Go90 fucking died. Yay! And... If you do, for some god-awful reason, want to watch Power of the Primes, it's all up on YouTube now, officially. Um, but don't. Just don't. Just don't. Just don't. You have been warned by young Mikey. Hmm. Uh, not even worth doing a half-hour focus roundtable on. I had a feeling it probably wouldn't. Uh, are you saying I should probably just not bother watching it, Mikey? I have a Andy? feeling you, you might be suggesting that. Literally, the one thing that makes this show watchable is the one that they, for some reason, decided to sort of sideline so they could talk about Optimus Primal, who is voiced by a good voice actor who's given terrible direction. <laughs> so, no, Andy, don't watch it. Okay, good. Uh, I, um, I didn't want to. Um, I'm glad it's been confirmed and that we're probably not going to be doing a thing on it. Yeah. Um, but also, I, um, I'm rewatching Kaijudo at the moment. Oh, I remember that. From it's The right. Hub. I really liked it. Um... There's still one that I always thought was just, like, a brilliant piece of right. Like, David Sobolov describes it as the best show no one saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was really fond of it, but, like, it never got the viewership, so it never went past season two. And I all... The Hub had some really good shows, and I think it's a real shame it got cancelled. Yeah. Like, I would like The Hub to evolve by now to be something to give Cartoon Network some actual competition. Yeah, unfortunately, because... we're kind of past that point. If The Hub, yeah. if the hub had started up... Uh, a few years earlier, I think, mm. than where it was when, you know, Netflix was becoming more of a thing, then maybe it would yep. have stood more of a chance. Yeah, and Netflix is not competing with Cartoon Network, so yeah. we don't, it's not improved, neither, neither of them is changing in response to the other. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Kaiju does a fun show, uh, giant monsters as main characters is something I will always love. Uh, but I, I do just love a bit where just like, you don't understand, this is bigger than you and me. Giant monster character comes in, it's not bigger than me. <laughs> And I just like David Sobolov delivering that line is just like, oh man, that was that was a good line. Um, the show is sometimes let down by animation, but oh, um, I think for the most part it looks pretty good. Um, done as far as I can tell, at least some of the people involved worked on sort of stuff like Men in Black and Godzilla the series. Oh yeah, uh, like they definitely got the sound effects from Godzilla the series. I'll tell you that much. Um, to a T, like there there there's a Godzilla roar in there. To which... a Mister T. Mm. Mr. T. Um, yeah, that was my week. Like like I said, I've been mostly busy. Uh, Andy, what about you? What have you done? Who uh, have you touched? Well, a lot of my week has been involved with uh, people coming into my house and doing construction and plumbing as we're having uh, one of the bathrooms completely gutted and re-plumbed and re-piped and redone for a new shower system for the, the old people. Uh, so it's it's been very very hectic you know helping them here and there where i can and then they need to turn off the power uh and other stuff and it's just it's just been faffy and that's going to be going on for a a few more weeks i think so uh yay that's that's something uh while not enduring that uh i got through the post uh a, another battle tome for age of sigma the night haunt one which is the army that i'm currently building so I've been having a look through at that stuff and reading it and going, oh, very nice, oh, nice, nice lore, nice backstories, all that fun stuff. Um, I've been doing more painting 
because uh, that's that's good stress relieving and whatnot. Um, so that's fun. Uh, and I actually started watching uh, a new animu. Well, not a new animu, but an animu I hadn't seen before. Uh, mm-hmm. Feet Apocrypha. 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 That's the one. Thank you, Mikey. Uh, Feet Apocrypha. Uh, I'm about eleven episodes through that at the moment. Uh, mm-hmm. It's entertaining. I like it. It's done by the same. Pe- I think it's done by uh, at least if it's not the same studio, it's a similar studio. Like, most of the guys that do the Fate series, uh, they do some pretty tasty animation. Uh, and this this show is no exception. It's, again, pretty tasty. Um, mm. It's quite interesting as well. Uh, but I, I feel that we haven't really got into the main oomph of the story. As it's uh, 25 episodes and we're about halfway... Well, I'm about half-ish way through. And, you know, yeah. th- those stories are kind of drift-fed as you go. Uh, but this series is different as it doesn't have seven servants. It has 14 Oh my uh, god! It's 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 yeah. It's forty. It's seven dudes uh, versus another seven dudes, uh, and then those those survivors will then fight each other for the Grail. So it's like oh, it's, it's a neat idea. Lots lots more dudes to fight and see. So it's 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 interesting. Um, I have a huge fate backlog. Uh, there's not actually that many animes to watch. There's like four or five series in there. Something like that. But there's like Fate Zero. There's Fate Stay Night, but just watch Unlimited Blade works because it's better, apparently. There's mm. uh, the one I'm watching. There's Grand Heaven, which is a movie or something like that. Mm. And then there's a one about a little magical girl, which is like, well, don't even bother watching that because unless hang you, on, unless hang you really want to. How do I put this delicately? Fate is porn. It was based off porn. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. It for anyone who doesn't know, the Fate State Night series is based off what we call an erotic uh, visual novel. Yeah, where you yeah. would basically be playing your game, and basically the point was one because they the way they do it here in Japan is like we want a story and we want people to be sitting in their pants. <laughs> um, so and that's bumped. when they made Steins Gate. Yeah, and they went, <laughs> oh no, Zibona has been killed. Really? Because I thought Steingate that jelly section killed. was quite sexy. Killed my boner. <laughs> because I'm sorry. No. Not Time to in the turn wall. into jelly, Myri. <laughs> not in the wall. Get in the wall, Myri. I don't want to get in the wall. Yeah, you get in the, the fucking wall. wall. <laughs> um so yeah, fate is porn and you're telling me they did a magical girl version of it. Is this like the one that's accessible to tiny children? Because I'm not comfortable with that. That's the one. I don't think it's got no. a game based on it, but it's no. certainly an no. anime. No, 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 not com no. No, I'm just not. I'm just uncomfortable with that. That's fine. I mean, <laughs> one could maybe put the argument forward. It's expanded past its original porn uh, beginnings. And one could also it, follow if up. If you wanted to, full... you could you could say Oof. the stripper got to college. You know, she paid away to college finally. I look forward to Queen's Blade. The show would let. Oh no, exact... no! Okay. Actually, Queen... more like Beyblade, <laughs> but with Queen's Blade. Queen... I look forward to that. No, Queen's Blade's long gone. That's that's way too far down in the mire in the muck. I was also gonna say it ain't long gone. It's coming fucking back. <laughs> uh, that's that's why I've always uh, thought of uh, like the Fate series as waifu the animes. Pick your waifu. <laughs> there's the great yeah. holy. There's the the holy grail wars, and then there's the great holy waifu wars. Yeah, because you can. Yeah, no one wins in the great waifu wars though. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone lose? Uh, I mean, only only feelings. <laughs> Only dignity and respect that people might have had for you. But I don't have any of that, so I'm all right. Good. Uh, so, have I done anything else? I think that's about it, really. Uh, I'm kind of flushing through my brain, like, have I done out else? I've just been playing through, uh, as well, bits here and there of Darksiders, the War Master Edition, if you remember Darksiders. Yes. Uh, did you play Darksiders? Didn't play myself, but watched other people play. Oh, that's disappointing, because I, th- I think that's a fun game. Mm. Um, the only problem is I don't like the dodge mechanic. It's not like Dark Souls. It's even less responsive than a Dark Souls mechanic, <laughs> which is like, oh, okay. Um, but no, it's it's like, hey, I like Zelda, said Andy never at one point ever in his life. Literally, yep. I've never liked Zelda. But I like how Zelda plays. I just don't give a shit about Zelda or the world of Link. <laughs> uh, so when Link is a vacuum of personality. Yeah. So when you give me like this real what, 90s styled comic like Heaven and Hell versus Spawn. It's basically Spawn in a sense. Mm. Uh, except the the war's already over. 
Uh, you give me that in a ruined world, I'm going to be all in. So I've been enjoying that again. Going back through and going, eh, this is fun. This is a fun game. Though I am doing it on the hardest difficult difficulty. So in parts, there are points where I'm like, God fucking damn it. That's why I wish the controls were a little bit more responsive in parts. Because I'm like, I'd be fine if it just dodged when I told him to dodge. Dodge! Dodge, and then he recovers from the dodge. It's like, okay, move again, move again, move again. Here we go. There we go. Now we can move. We need a piccolo um, in here. <laughs> dodge! <laughs> uh, yeah, that's about it, unfortunately. Uh, that's all the exciting stuff I've done that I can think mm. of. Um, so I guess we should probably end the podcast there, Mr. Mikey. Is uh, That's that's all we got for this week. It's a quiet week. It is, and that's okay. That's okay. Where can people find you on the internet, Mr. Mikey? You can find me on Twitter as Irish Paleo. You can find me on YouTube as Evil Fee 3. If you have comments or feedback or talk or swearing or anything that you'd like to send us, you can do it on Twitter at the Moonbase 2 or on our email. The address is themoonbase2 at gmail.com. I'm going to remind people the two is the number, not the word. <laughs> yes. I had one person say, I, I wrote two. And it was like, no. And then if you write T O O, I have no hope for you. <laughs> what about just T O? To. 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 Man, we should have been to. the moon base To. 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 Actually, that would work. To. When, 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 when I came in, that would have worked. Yep. Shit, why didn't we rename the moon base Shit. To? <laughs> moon base To. That's how we should have been introducing every Rider episode, and every time we said To, we could have had Rider 1 say To. Yeah, and like you need the, the, the wind sound effect as well. Oh, well, yeah, that's a prerequisite. The, Damn straight. Goes Not new, road. right? A one. No, no, no. I hate that, that suit. That didn't happen. That was a terrible suit. That, that ghost was in it, and no. Um, remember, right? One, the first. Those movies. Movie. I remember Jai was not a happy camper. I remember Chris was like the first one. I remember we did the a podcast on it, and Chris was kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, you see what they were trying to do. You see what they were trying to do. And then we got to the set, the rider. <laughs> what was it? Uh, oh, the V three one. Yeah, something like that. The neck. Right in next. Yeah. And oh my god. If I could track down that recording, I would. It was very early in the days for me, but it was just that moment of just like, you know how Chris is positive about literally everything? Mm -hmm. Or at least tries to be? He, he he weren't positive about that. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't a fan. <laughs> he wasn't he weren't a happy camper. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, that's um that's me. Andy, what about yourself? Uh you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr CCTFW. You can find me on YouTube as Cobra Commander TFW. You can find this podcast on the Moonbase 2 forums, we're on Twitter, we're on iTunes, we're on Facebook, we're on Libsyn, we're on uh YouTube, I think if I didn't mention it as Moonbase 2 Transformers Podcast. Uh, that is again oh, yeah. two with the number, not the the words, like crazy people would. Um and if you want to head over to patreon.com slash moonbase2, I you can help out with $2 each month, which gets you the extended vi uh, version from the Files of Teletron 2, um, which will probably be six issues this month. <laughs> Again. Uh, and you also get it early. Uh, there'll also be a Moonbase woo-woo. I don't know. I don't know if there will be a Moonbase woo-woo this month, just because of the, um, the malarkey uh, with TF Nation happening. Uh, I'll discuss that with Mikey. Actually, we'll we'll talk about that and see yeah. what needs to be done. I have an idea. Okay. I ha also I lost you there for a second for some reason. You're like your audio just went. Um, but yes, I have an idea that might just involve me and one other person. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, and if you if you want, you can be like these uh, nice people, like Seth the uh, Bayans, who signed up this week, uh, and also Jason Kirk, who signed up this oh my week God. as well. Actual real people, real human beings. They, oh, man. They, they get all of the, the benefits uh, that I, I've mentioned and um, nothing else. Hi, Jason Kirk. You heard about another podcast that are like Radio Free Cybertron, which we mentioned earlier on and mocked. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey's the worst. I mean, you should expect this by now. I mean well. No, you don't. I mean well. Uh, so yeah, that is it. Oh, you can find everything on the ccbunker.weebly.com as well, if you like. Uh, that's it then, Mikey. Unless you've got anything else you've got to say. Um, Dinobot said. Yes, yeah, the uh, the Dinobot figure is out now. Apparently, there's a slight problem with some with the ratcheting shoulders. Yeah, what's been happening with that? Um, basically, it's too tight and it can damage itself. But uh, you know, quote in the quote, 
Uh, to quote a certain Canadian, everybody get on the floor, everybody lube your dinosaur. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Mm. Um, so yes, if you if you put the old shock oil in, in the joint, it will f- friction away quite happily. Mm, uh, but okay. apparently, I, yes, I wondered, he... Is it a big thing that's happening with a lot of them, or is it like a small number of them, or what, do you know? That I don't know. I think it's going to be a case-by-case thing. Mm. Um, but apparently, it is literally the toy equivalent of God. So people are very happy mean? with it. People are very happy with it. What, what do you mean happy. it's the toy equivalent of God? But basically, I think people will be marrying and or worshipping this toy for years to come. Why? They're very excited by it. You're still dancing around the question. I don't own it, Andy. All I can say I, is well, that every I... five minutes, some, it pops up and everyone goes like, Oh my god, look at him! No, no one's ah. actually said why they love it so much. They, 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 they just love it. Is that it? I, I'm, I haven't found an English review yet. It's all just like Wotafa and people like that. Oh, uh, okay. So like, I can't... This just in. I don't know how excited Japanese people are just by the sound of their voice, and not certainly not how excited Wotaf is because he always sounds excited. <laughs> um, but like all I've been like, he just keeps popping up on my Twitter, and it's like this is an amazing thing. Mm-hmm. This is my child. Wow, it's my favorite one. Uh, but yeah, that that's here now. Right, um, looks good. Cool, cool, sweet sauce. Uh, well, Mister Mikey, it's been good, and we will catch you next week, everybody. To.